Hey, what's up? Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Roll Pod, an Alabama sports podcast from Bama 247. I am staff writer Cody Goodwin, along here with Alex Scarborough and Mike Rodak. Going to play another not quite off-season game. Maybe we can start calling these preseason games now. We're going to offer up some bold predictions for the 2024 season coming up later in the show. One thing I did want to get to before we get to that, though, the all SEC preseason media teams were released last Friday. We obviously had already recorded our show by then, so we weren't able to touch on that then. But I figured now would be a good time to touch on it. The media that attended SEC media days, they predicted the SEC champion. They predicted the order of finish, and they also picked a first, second, and third team in terms of individual accolades. Alabama was pretty well represented on the individual team basis i counted what's that 16 total selections between the first second and third team five on the first team four on the second team seven on the third team georgia was picked to win the sec i think that's pretty good consensus among this group at least and then also just running away with the rest of the sec media a lot of people thought that georgia is going to be there they a lot of people thought georgia is going to be texas in the sec championship game Figured we could just react to that first to start off today's show. Alex, I'll throw it to you first. How do we feel about the way the preseason SEC media poll came down? Uh, the poll itself, fine. I mean, Alabama was about where I expected them to be. Georgia, Texas makes sense. And then it's, as we've talked about before, it's almost like a Georgia, Texas tier. And then there's a lot of teams right in the middle there. So however you want to uh, vote that is, is fine to me. It does. It is a reminder, though. We're moving away for another reminder. We're moving away from divisions. It's going to be weirder to predict orders because of how that shakes out. You have to look at every schedule, but uh, no, nothing egregious there. The player side, uh, we can we can get into that. And uh, Graham Nicholson being a little bit disrespected, but no, the order of finish was pretty much par for the course. But Vandy got a shout out, so that was nice. <laughs> Vandy Vandy got not just one but two shout outs. In the uh, championship selection poll, them and South, they got as many first place votes as LSU. South Carolina also got a vote, which was interesting. And then the rest of them went to largely Georgia, handful of Texas. Alabama also got a few. Ole Miss got a few. So a lot of people believing the the Rebel hype going into 2024. Mike, any initial thoughts on the poll or the players selected before we dive into them a little bit more? Yeah, I think the the poll. I agree with Alex that there's probably tears. Like I don't. I think Georgia and Texas were one tier. I think Alabama and Ole Miss were another tier. I think they could have gone either way. And it was pretty close voting points wise. I actually had Ole Miss higher because I think their schedule is easier. Um, and then I think the next tier also went as I pretty much expect. I think LSU, Missouri, Tennessee, Oklahoma are all in the same tier to me. And that voting was pretty close as well. Um, and then I think really – nine through 16 i don't think there was too much doubt that those eight teams would kind of round it out um the order you know is debatable i think AM and auburn have typically been a little bit higher uh obviously vandy and mississippi state have been lower but those bottom eight probably doesn't even matter at the end of the day um it's just they're just kind of there i don't think anybody really expects them to win and that's you know our lord and savior nick saban who's now giving opinions on everything um, has basically said there's six or seven playoff teams in, in the SEC. Um, and I think that, again, is kind of represented in this poll um, where you have Georgia, Texas, Alabama, Ole Miss, LSU, Missouri, Tennessee. I mean, you can probably make an argument that Oklahoma could theoretically get into the playoff. I don't think it would like be the most shocking result in the history of college football. I think there's a, a separation. Like I think it would be a lot more shocking if A&M or Auburn made the playoff than Oklahoma or Tennessee. So to me, I think the cutoff is like possibly eight teams, uh, not obviously in total, but eight teams that are in the realistic conversation to do that. And, you know, of those, if you're saying to me right today, like how many SEC teams make the playoff, I'd say four. Yeah. Georgia, Texas, Alabama, Ole Miss going by this poll. But obviously it's going to depend on the results. I think four SEC teams can make it. Yeah, I was about to ask that question, how we feel about the number of teams that make it. I think – especially with the first year moving to 12, there's going to be a hesitancy to overload on SEC teams and have that appearance of bias. Um, but I, I do think at the end of the day, there probably will only be four deserving teams to come out of it. And the two, the wild cards to me in the conference are LSU and Tennessee. And it's both for the same reasons, the quarterback driven element and knowing how good they could both be respectively on offense. 
um, but also knowing that it could go either way with both of them. So uh, those two were the ones that I look at and just go throw my hands up and say they could be in the playoff and you wouldn't surprise me. They could also finish in the bottom half of the SEC and that would just be the way it goes. Yeah, like I think there's we've talked about Missouri plenty because they're on Alabama's schedule, but there's a path for them to, you know, probably jump into that playoff tier, I guess if that's what we're going to call the top four. That would also mean, I mean, for a lot of these guys that are in the conversation, right, the LSU, Tennessee, Oklahoma's, if they're going to elevate themselves in that conversation, they're obviously going to have to probably take down some of the other guys that are in what we consider the top playoff tier, I suppose, of the SEC, which I think is what's going to make this season so much more fun. Like there's a lot of people that are like, I don't want to say a lot of people, but there are some loud people that are like, now that the playoffs expanded, the regular season doesn't matter as much. No, I think it matters more now, which, you know, you don't have to be perfect. But like you got to win the proper games to position yourself to potentially be in that playoff conversation. And then it'll ultimately come down to the committee, which is a whole entire separate conversation. And we don't really cover the Big Ten in any in depth here on this show or elsewhere because we're an SEC country. But that's a whole other variable with a whole other slew of teams at, at the very least two teams, I would argue, Ohio State and Oregon. But who knows what Michigan and Penn State and some of those other schools will look like, too. But there's a lot of different variables that are going to go into a 12 team playoff and personally i'm excited i think it's going to be i think it's going to make for a really fun and interesting season just because we just you know we think we know what's going to happen and then that's when you know expectations get shattered a little bit so okay. that and I, I think you're right about the regular season mattering almost more i think there'll be less anxiety because in the past it was like one through six and your season could blow up in one weekend yeah well now it's like six through twelve you're in it. I mean, six through 18, you're in it. Um, and you can be in it even if you hit a road bump along the way. So there might be some teams that can phone in it at the end of the season and, you know, the Georges of the world. Uh, you're still going to worry about seeding. But I think, uh, I think it's going to accomplish what the CFP wanted to accomplish, which is bringing in more regions of the country. I mean, we've shut off half the country, it feels like, half the time when it comes to Alabama. Clemson, LSU, you know, on down. There's only like four teams dominating college football. There needs to be – the love needs to be spread around, and I think we're going to see that in terms of the number of teams who feel like they have a chance. Yeah, no, I agree with that wholeheartedly. And as the, you know, the playoff is what it's going to expand again after just one year, we don't know what 12 teams are going to look like, but after this season, I think we jump immediately to 14 – more teams make the playoff, right? And like eventually I think it's just going to keep expanding because people are going to see how great the playoff is. For for those of us who watch the NFL with any sort of regularity, we know how much fun playoffs can be and how much the regular season can matter week to week in terms of determining who qualifies. So we're only going to get bigger, right? I think that's going to be – that that'll be the fun part. In terms of the, uh, the individual first, second, third team, preseason, media day, all SEC teams list – Alabama finished with five on the first team, four on the second team, seven on the third team. Mike, I'll throw it back to you. Any surprises? Anything looked out of the ordinary? Who got snubbed? Who maybe got a little bit more love than you thought when it came to the Alabama players that got picked to the All-SEC team? Yeah, I think, look, for most people, because we're not player personnel directors at SEC schools, I think a lot of people who sit down and make these ballots are going to look at a few different things. Look at last year's All-SEC teams especially the coaches ones to me like that carry some weight and what the coaches voted last year. They're going to look at some stats um, and they're going to probably maybe look at some other people who have already made some predictions, but all American lists this year um, and kind of compile that together because honestly, nobody's watched a film of like every single offensive lineman in the sec to rank them. So I think some of it's just how well you know players and players who are coming from outside the conference sometimes get forgotten. And I think that might have been where Graham Nicholson slipped through the cracks um, because, yes, as Alabama writers or if you're an Alabama fan, like you know who Graham Nicholson is because we've talked about him a lot this offseason. But I think for other people at SEC Media Days, they might have forgotten that he was the Groza Award winner last year and that he came to Alabama. So that might have slipped through the cracks. That might have been where Bert Auburn – from Texas got higher in the list. There might've been a lot of Texas writers at media days because it was in Dallas and that might've helped Auburn a little bit. Um, not Auburn, but Bert Auburn. Bert. Um, and that's kind of where I see that. I, again, you call it a snub. I think at the end of the day, like who cares? I mean, I was out there ranking kickoff specialists and long snappers. I don't know how in the world I'm supposed to do that, but 
Um, I, honestly, well, I was looking at kickoff stats from last year to see which teams <laughs> had the, the longest kickoffs. But the thing is, you had to meld together SEC and um, Big 12 stats last year because you're looking at Oklahoma and Texas players. And I, in some cases, I feel like there's a few players from those two schools that might have gotten overlooked. Like Gavin Sawchuk, the running back for Oklahoma, had a pretty good year last year and wasn't anywhere in the top three teams. And there was a few ties. So there's like five running backs that got voted. He had much better stats than Justice Haynes. Justice Haynes, I think, is projected to be better, but Gavin Sawchuk was one of the best running backs in the Big 12 last year, um, stats-wise. So I had him fourth on my list behind Trevor Etienne and Montreal Johnson and Jarquez Hunter. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's interesting just to see how this all happens. I, I had to pull up a list of the Big 12 SC, all conference teams last year. For in terms of like the Alabama players, though. Yeah. I thought Deontay Lawson was probably a little bit overvoted on the first team. I think there's still mm-hmm. questions there. Um, but there was a few ties, so there's actually four linebackers on the first team. So um, that helps a little bit. And I thought Tim Smith on the second team and Tim Keenan on the third team, I probably would have flipped that. Yeah. Um, if you want to say Tim Smith is deserving of an All-SEC honor, he hasn't yet in his career. I don't think he's that sort of player yet. Um other than that, I mean, again, there's projections like who knows how Damani Jackson and Keon Sab, how they're going to work out. I think Booker, Proctor, Railsford are all where they need to be. I think Milrow was where he needed to be on the third team. Uh, Jaden Roberts on the third team, maybe you can say slightly higher, but again, trying to compare guards to each other is, is tough. So the Smith Keenan one was like the only one that really stood out to me besides the, the Nicholson snub, if you will. I've said it before. I'm not. I and maybe I've been watching as closely as you guys, but the the Alabama's defensive tackles have not been. They don't jump off the page to me. Yeah. And I've talked to talent evaluators who are just like, there's no game record there. So does that mean they shouldn't be anywhere on the All SEC team? I don't know, but uh, I think it's a little bit of name recognition, a little bit of Alabama thing going on there. But uh, they certainly have the potential. I just have not seen it yet. I think, well, the other thing, too, is when you get down into those second and third teams, a lot of it is just name recognition. Like, I feel like there's been a lot of hype surrounding Justice Haynes, for example, for many years, even though he literally was just a true freshman last year. So it's like, OK, maybe he deserves the the third team nod or, you know, I, I forget how many running backs we ultimately had to rank. Was it like six or something Four. like that? There's Yeah. So there was probably a lot that like threw him a bone at the end because it's like he should be good. Right. Like that's, you know, and I, I, that was probably a little bit of that with some of these other positions. Yeah. I, outside of the whole Keenan Smith thing, I wasn't really too beat up over where these guys landed in terms of like Bert Auburn over Graham Nicholson. Like the first thing that came to my mind was almost the same argument we made last year when a lot of us thought Will Reichard should have perhaps won the Lou Groza award. And that was looking at Graham Nicholson and being like, he ain't played nobody, Paul. Like that's, Maybe that's why he's second team right now. You know, doesn't matter when you're a kicker, though. Those tough Mac field goal units. Yeah. Hey, man, it's everything means a little bit more in the SEC. You know what I mean? So, right, the stadium, I, yeah, I think, is what it would ultimately come down to. Like, is Graham Nicholson going to be as clutch when he's yeah. trying to kick in a hundred thousand people in Tiger Stadium or Neyland Stadium? That's yeah. the, that's the question with him. 